Look, I know you got your own freaking problems. You don't want to hear about mine, but in the interest of being open and transparent, I've got too many bikes. Yes, this is in fact one of the better problems you could have, and it's a very easy problem to solve. We can just give a bike away, and that's what we're gonna do today, but it's not exactly a bike yet. No, the trade show circuit is not kind to demo bikes, and sometimes you need to cannibalize a few to make one whole. And that's exactly where this bike came from. Back when I was working with Diamondback, they said, hey, Seth, we have like a pile of bike. It's all good stuff, but it's missing a lot of parts. Do you want us to send it to you? Can you do something with it? So it's been sitting in the storage unit for quite some time. It's an alloy release 29 inch frame with a rear shock, a drivetrain, brakes. And if we can make it whole, it's gonna be a really capable mountain bike. And this could be a great opportunity to really geek out about how you find parts and how you put together a bike. The bike's going to a great cause and I'll talk more about that later. But first, let's take inventory of what we have and what we don't have. Please have a rear brake. This is missing some key components. It's like 53.5% of a bike. We're missing a fork, a front wheel, a front brake, seat post, seat post clamp, stem, handlebars, grips, headset. I guess we're technically down a tire. We'll definitely think of the other things. So let's start with the easy ones. Before I unpacked the bike, I knew it was missing a front wheel. So I found a set of 29 inch wheels. They're carbon, technically XC wheels, but they're gonna be fine. So oddly enough, this bike was packaged with a dropper seat post lever, but there's no dropper post. Luckily, I had one in the parts bin, a KS Lev, which is what this bike came with. Now we can also tell from the website that this takes a 31.6 seat post, and this is a 31.6 seat post. That is the outside diameter of the seat post or the inside diameter of the seat tube. You can find that in the specifications or measure it with a caliper. And when you're using a caliper to find sizes for off the shelf bike parts, you're not gonna get exact measurements. If you find one that's close, you're gonna find one that fits. Now we also need a clamp to hold the dropper post on. Now the clamp is not gonna be the same diameter as the seat post, it's gonna be the outside diameter of the seat tube. And so you have to either measure that with a caliper or look on the website and it'll usually tell you. Pedals we have thanks to Crank Brothers, saddle and grips we have thanks to Ergon, and I have a set of box carbon handlebars we can use. The outside diameter of the center of the bars is 35 millimeters, and so we need a stem with a 35 millimeter clamp diameter, and I have that too. Now we're also missing a front brake. The rear brake is Dior XT, and I don't have a front Dior XT brake, but the Murder Machine has a front Dior XT brake, and oddly, not a Dior XT brake in the rear. I actually have the matching front brake for that, so we're gonna do a switcheroo. Then a big one, we need a 29 inch fork with 140 millimeters of travel. Now you wanna get a fork with the travel that the bike was specced with because if you get a lower or higher travel fork, it's gonna change the geometry of the bike. You can go within 10 millimeters, but I wouldn't go further than that. I'm hoping we can get a fork before the end of this week. Let's get this thing on the stand and start prepping some parts. So this is a big old extra large frame extra large 820 millimeter bars, but they're a little loud. I don't know if they kind of match, so I'm gonna wet sand them and put some flat black paint on them. Should look nice. So as I said, this bike comes with a nice 12-speed Shimano drivetrain. We wanna use that, but first we need to move the cassette over to our new wheel. Now the original wheel has a Shimano micro spline free hub body. The new wheels have a SRAM XD free hub body, not gonna fit. And so my solution is put that awesome drivetrain into the parts bin for use on another bike, and we'll take a SRAM Eagle drivetrain out of the parts bin, and we'll install that on the bike instead. Today is tomorrow and the paint on our handlebars has dried. We have most of the parts we need for this bike, but we're missing a couple of oddball things. Let me show you the first one. The lever for the dropper post. We have the lever, but we don't have a way to mount it to the handlebars. Let's look in the parts bin. Mm -hmm. 
We did find another lever we can use in its place. Now we need to find a way to hold the cable in place at the bottom of the post where it's routed in. There should be little cable jank right here, a little cylindrical thing. I think I have one. We did have one. I have a whole bunch of these. These are ridiculously expensive. I've seen them sold as cable clamps, gas nipple, and they're the same thing. So if you ever misplace one of these and need a new one, it's worth searching for an extra couple of minutes to find one at a fair price. So you don't end up spending like $17 on a cable jank. And we also found another essential part this morning, the headset. Our friends down the road came through, Cane Creek gave us a headset, but that's not all. They also gave us like 30% of the bike. Pretty classy looking fork and classy move on the part of Cane Creek. When I told them what organization we were donating this bike to, they were all about it. And they came through with the headset and the fork on short notice. Now, this fork is 150 millimeters of travel. That will do fine on this bike. It originally had 140. Upping it by 10 is okay. Makes the bike a little bit slacker, but that's fine. So let's start by removing the old cups from this headset. So this frame fits what's called a zero stack headset, abbreviated ZS. What that means is that the bearing cups kind of rest on the edge of the head tube and then the cartridge bearings kind of go inside the frame. So the bearings are not increasing the stack of the head tube, hence zero stack. So this is the cartridge bearing that fits up into the lower headset cup. So it sits on top of this pretty little ring here, just like that. We have to press this onto the fork or bang it onto the fork. So as I said, the topic of headsets goes deep. So I left some links to some guides below that will allow you to determine what headset you have, what headset you need, how to identify them. Cane Creek has a really good one. And if you're more of a mechanic, Park Tool has a really good one as well. So as you might notice, this steer tube is very, very long and the stem is gonna sit somewhere around here. And so these are designed to be cut down. Anytime I take out a hacksaw, Seth, did you know you can use a pipe cutter? Pipe cutters do make a really straight and even cut, but it leaves a gnarly bulge at the end of the tube. Nothing a little filing or sanding can't take care of, but I always have my hacksaw guide set up for cutting carbon. So I use the same means to cut everything. Just found a dead snake under the toolbox. Uh, next to the star nut I was looking for. We have quite a few tools here, but not a star nut setting tool. And so I just stick a little bolt in it and hammer it in as straight as possible. So now we can install our fork. I think the handlebars came out pretty sweet and that's kind of the last piece of the puzzle to start building this bike up. isn't the same as the other lever. The levers actually are exactly the same, but the lever bodies are not the same. I guess I just can't unsee it, and it looks kind of weird, but one of these things is not like the other. 32 pounds, 11 ounces, 14.7 kilograms. That's an alloy bike size extra large. That's pretty good. 
let's stare at it. The weather is a little bit better today. Dave from the Dirt Therapy Project is coming over here to receive the bike. As it turns out, veterans of the armed forces have a really tough time reintegrating into society. It's like culture shock. And so the Dirt Therapy Project uses mountain biking to help veterans reintegrate. Anybody who's served in the armed forces and has come home. Mountain biking gives them a sense of camaraderie, a challenge, excitement, and it provides an escape so they can just focus on mountain biking and forget about their troubles. I think it's fair to say a lot of us go mountain biking for that reason. Not a lot of people talk about it because it seems like you're in an uncomfortable situation, now you come back home, everything's gonna be better. It's a lot more complicated than that. The Dirt Therapy Project started in Texas, and now there are chapters in several other states, including North Carolina, and they're building their loner fleet. Now, Dave already has a few bikes, but he is missing an extra large, and so the bike that we built up this week is gonna fill that spot and hopefully help somebody in some small way. I wanted this bike to find a new home, and I did think it would be a good opportunity to show you a few technical aspects of bikes, how to find parts. That's kind of an excuse to just build up this bike and put it someplace cool. If you or anyone you know is interested in finding out more about the Dirt Therapy Project, I left a link below. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.